Hello YouTube and welcome to another Moto Vlog. This is another guest vlog coming at you from NC Bike on an RC390. Very cool stuff. So we got our first clip here. Just showing off a couple things. Speed differentials, line differentials, and just the madness of, my, uh, of the novice group in uh, motorcycle track days. Checks up right on the back of this guy's rear tire, but then the guy starts accelerating into the corner, which my friend declines to do. Smart move there, going accelerating into the corner. And now he's left at the mercy of all the big bikes when he's on his 390. And he ends up getting stuck behind these guys in the orange jerseys. Those are the people who are brand new to the track and taking their free class. So that they'll stay dressed out there with uh, everybody else. So now we're going to another lap. We've uh, dispensed really with the orange jerseys. They're in front. He's even further back. Again, just showing the speed differential of some of these guys here. Look how bad everyone has to check up for uh, this turn. Everyone jockeying for space and position. It almost looks like a super slow mo race. Almost. <laughs> Not much you can do about that. Yeah, my video looks like a slideshow. That's okay. Get you guys going here with this. A little early. How much you can do. Now this is what really stinks on this track. You know you're faster than this guy and you want to pass him around turn 5, but he takes that wide swoopy line into turn 5 and you're stuck behind him because you don't want to pass him on the inside. And you're smart enough to know that going all the way to the outside of the track to make a pass is how you crash on this track. One of the easiest ways to crash. Funneling up through turn 5. We'll see the example of that a little later. So get ready. See that huge conga line of bikes in the turn six. It's hard to find your pace, you know, when you're on this 390 because you're stuck behind people and it's not easy. So here we go. We got a little bit of clear track ahead of us. That's always good. But again, watch what happens here on the straight. Let's see if he gets past. See that light blinking, telling it to shift. Nice early braking, get the bike turned in nice and quick. A longer turn one. You can see how fast he's caught these people through turn one. They were nowhere to be found on the straight, and now all of a sudden he's right on the bumper. Or on the rear, you know, rear license plate. But a big mistake there. And that's actually something I want to talk about. That's kind of a theme from this rider for, for this, uh, in this video. And I don't want to fault him for that, because this bike is difficult to ride fast. I think if you've seen my review on it, you know how I feel about this bike going fast. And that it's with the low power and high nimbleness of it, it's very, very easy to turn the bike in either too a little too early or a little too quickly, which is kind of the same thing, right? But the bike is so nimble, and you're going a little less fast than you thought you were, you end up churning the bike in too early for uh, how quick you're churning, you know what I mean? You're not expecting the bike to react with such a quick turn in. So you can see for the most part, he's getting it right. He's, he's getting that bike right to the apex, right where it needs to be with a quick, decisive turn in. Ooh. We got a mistake there, a little bit of uh, late braking, trying to brake and turn a little too much. Again, it happens when you're getting used to a motorcycle. No harm, no foul there, you know? And then you just get mugged on the straight, like usual. So 
now we got our interesting <laughs> clip, you'll see. This is again another instance where everyone starts bunching up and there's not much you can do and uh, someone gets a little frustrated and to be honest that's the last thing you want to do on the track is start feeling frustrated because it'll lead you to start thinking with your throttle hand rather than look at that coach swooping on in there at the last second I wouldn't call that an inside pass but it was pretty close but yeah you start thinking with your throttle hand and thinking about how you know to use more throttle and that usually gets you in a lot of trouble. You really want your technique to come from speed rather more than anything else. See the coach, I don't know what he's really doing there looking for. Maybe he's gonna give the guy in the orange some advice. Now you can see that these guys swooping by at a high rate of speed, which is fine. Usually. But there you saw and heard that it's not fine. So now we see this guy coming in here right where the windshield is. You can just see him there. And there he goes. So it's not the cause of a crash like that isn't your speed, it's your change in speed. Either that guy got on the gas or off the gas quite hard right before he slipped. And that's what caused his accident. He wasn't, he had a sudden change in, in, in force to that rear wheel. And that upset the motorcycle greatly and caused it to just spin out. On turn five, you have to be very careful to be super duper smooth. You're gonna roll on the throttle during the turn. You've gotta roll onto it very slowly and deliberately. And if you're gonna roll off the throttle, you have to be the same. If you make any sudden throttle changes while you're leaned over with your knee on the ground, you're gonna have a really bad day. And that's what happened to that guy. He had a really bad day and crashed in turn five. Right next to my friend, as you can see. So, anyways, we're on to the next clip. This is just some more riding. As you can see, he's getting bit by the, the early turning bug there. And again, by another rider who swoops in to turn five. Gosh, that's my biggest pet peeve. Not what my, my friends do. My friends riding the lines quite well, but this other guy, you know. He's going around turn five pretty fast, but the way he swooped in there cost him a boatload of time. Does pretty good there on turn six. You go out, 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 and then in at the last second. That's not bad. Turn seven, I argue, you can probably go faster. Turn seven's a pretty quick turn. You can carry a lot of speed through it. You can see turn eight, the uh, guy ahead. He was pretty quick through turn five. He's very timid here. Perhaps he doesn't know the track yet. And uh, that's something you got to watch out for. Just because someone's faster than you in one section doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be faster than you in another section. And then, of course, since he's not on a 300, he looks like he's on a 600. He's just going to zoom off in the distance. We say goodbye to him. Next we got another little clip. Can't remember. Oh yeah, the inside pass. That was definitely an inside pass by that guy. Um, it was obviously a mistake. He got in. And that, that's one of the big dangers of passing through those S's is that you can end up doing that to somebody and putting them out on the inside. Now we're going to watch a couple laps in a later session just to see, um, to get a good feel for this guy's riding, you know, what do you like, what do you don't like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Can we 
can see the guys ahead of him going pretty slow. He's going to stay in touch with them. For now, at least. Turn one. Taking it nice and easy, you know, cold tires and all that. It's always smart. Turn to a very quick turn in. Um, I have to disagree with that. See, he came in and then he came out and then he came back in like a double apex. Turn three, very nice. That's just right now. What you want to do is hang left, just like that. That lets you get a good run through turn four. Oh, but see, he got bit by the the nimbleness of the bike there and turned in. You know, committed very nicely but committed just a tad fraction of a second too early and too quickly, or too quickly, either way, and had to uh, make an adjustment to his line. Turn five, very good. Very, very good there. Turn six, again, this is looking really nice. Coming in there to the apex and then going nice and wide on the exit. That's exactly what you want to do. But turn seven, I still contend maybe that's the one turn where I see him going a little slower than he would want to go. And then turn eight, you can basically keep the bike wide open there. These turns look good. He's really clipping these apexes and using the whole track. And then again, bit by that bug, but just a little bit that time. He just had to make the tiniest of adjustments there to his line get through but each of those adjustments you know is going to cost you a couple tenths of a second in a race but is, we're not racing this is a track day we're out here to have some fun right and i have to say when it comes to that i'm saying this guy's a pretty good beginner and rider you know he might not be the fastest guy on the track but he's taking the right lines he's being predictable he's not swooping which is the biggest thing on this track like as you can see there he doesn't suddenly swoop to the outside for no reason and this is a good turn in here didn't go all the way to that first apex kept it a little wide and then kept it a little wide to the second apex you can see that guy ahead of him did not do that and he he had like a weird line coming into turn three which really cost him a lot of time to my friend and put my friend right on him on his bumper or on his rear tire whatever you want to say and of course, see, they go nice and wide through turn five to pass this guy. Now, my friend, again, is very apprehensive to do this. The bike is very nimble, so getting it to change direction subtly is, is not the easiest thing in the world. Especially when you're not used to it. That would be the biggest thing I'd have to say in terms of room for improvement is you got to get the bike to slow down a little bit in the, in the direction changes. You want to work on making very smooth and delicate direction changes rather than these quick, snappy ones you're doing now. There's there's definitely a time and a place for quick, snappy direction changes. Don't get me wrong. But it seems like you know for for turns like turn five, you don't want a snappy direction change. You want to be extremely smooth, and that's something uh, you're going to want to work on for sure. But beyond that, I mean. I don't have much advice. I, I would say this this has been quite good riding for especially for me Kenner group. You know, if you can if you can smooth out your direction changes and become a little more it'll help you become more consistent. And then just talk to some coaches and you'll be up in intermediate because you, you've got the riding style that you need to be safe in intermediate. So we've got one more forward facing clip here and I can't remember what this one is. I think this is just from the last session, a little more riding showing, you know, the last forward-facing session we have. You see him not go all the way wide there, and that's something I really like, because the bike doesn't really have the power to pull out of turn one, so what are you going wide for, you know? There, there's no real reason for it on a track day. Now, if you're racing, you might want to go wide to block your opponents, or get a better entrance into turn two or something like that, but when you're just on a track day, ooh, had to back out there, maybe even hit the grass a little bit. Again, bit by that bug, that's the theme of this, is that 
you can see here where this turn is, isn't a perfectly constant radius turn. At least it doesn't feel like it. So you have to adjust your steering through the turn just a little bit. But he's, because of the lightness and the nimbleness of the bike, he's having this somewhat hard time keeping it per making those perfect corrections, which leads to overcorrections and then another overcorrection and so on. So I can see why he doesn't go too fast through turn five, because it makes it a little tough. That's the end of our session. Got one more clip, and I think it's going to show off exactly what we're talking about here. I don't really like the rear-facing cameras, so I'm only going to just play a little bit of this. So here we come through turn uh, seven here. We're going into turn eight, the fastest turn on the track. And this is what happens. A little not it's not that it's almost not that he turned in too much it's that he wasn't going fast enough the bike didn't have the grunt to do it anyways guys thanks for watching and think about your riding